true. Well, it's quasi-private, quasi-government. And in a way, that's true. Back when they used to say it's the Federal Reserve, it's government, that was a lie. And you're a conspiracy theorist if you say it's federal. You're a conspiracy theorist if you say the Federal Reserve is, is, is not federal and is private. Okay, I mean, I remember 15 years ago, people calling the show going, you're nuts, it's the Federal Reserve, you know, dangerous conspiracy theorists say that, ADL, Southern Poverty Law Center would say you were crazy. Now they have to admit that it's private, but then they spin it to say, but it's quasi-government. But in a way, that's true, because it's carrying out a congressional government treasury function illegally. They've usurped it. And so, yes, it is a corporate fascist banking cartel that is carrying out a government function that's supposed to be totally neutral and just a symbol of currency that is out there so people can exchange goods, not making everything about the currency itself. So these private interests are able to give themselves this money interest-free, and, and, but even better, they get the public to give them the money interest-free, and then we're in debt to them when they loan it back to us. So they want more debt. That's why they want unfunded mandates. That's why they want this control. But in a weird lawyer way, he was telling the truth. Well, it is private, but it's quasi-government. Well, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, NATO is pretty much private. The British East India Company took over and created what's modern India. Before the British ever had to come in and back them up, they ran India and all those souls. And it was a private corporation, but it was still government. See, I'm for privatization, but not this counterfeit where they come in and just take over what the people have built, jack up the prices, and become the government themselves and get rid of due process. See the difference? It's all about labels. More calls coming up. Hello, I'm Alex Jones. Okay, I only got to one caller. I only got to one caller during that long segment. I got to get to more of this. I've, I've got to cover this other news. Uh, let's go to Carl in Texas, then Scott, Chris, Kyle, Ronnie, and Dave, and that's going to be it for calls. So I got to cover this news. Carl in Texas, welcome. Go ahead. Carl drop. Boom. Scott in Washington. You're on the air. Alex, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hello. Uh, the reason I called is because... Yeah, bro, uh, you're on air. Hold, hold on just a minute. Can you hear me? Hold on just a minute. Because cause I'm talking to you, and you said hello, and you kept talking. Can you hear me, Scott? Yes. I okay, go ahead. It. You're on the air right now. I think it's amazing that I'm talking to Alex Jones. You're a big force helping Ron Paul's uh, presidential campaign. I think that uh, something I would like to suggest is... a. Uh, to help revive the Ron Paul rock the revolution with Zach Carter. I, uh, I uh, know a guy that was on the Ron Paul rock the revolution uh, tour before it fell apart. His name's Aaron Greens. He's a, a, a consciousness rapper. He raps about all the things you talk about. And uh, a 10 FEMA district, uh, a 10 city tour with Willie Nelson, Dave Mustaine, you, Alex Jones, Jesse Ventura, collecting our signatures as a write-in candidate for Ron Paul. You could go through 10 cities in the U.S. and collect millions of our signatures saying we want Ron Paul as our president because this is our last chance. The trends, like Gerald Salinda yeah. says, the trends aren't getting better. Yes. Hello? I hear you, and I appreciate your call. Uh, I, I don't know if you help. Thank you. Uh, I don't think that uh, Dave uh, Mustaine is going to... He likes Ron Paul. He told me yesterday on the phone. He didn't really endorse Santorum. He said that was out of context. Uh, but uh, I don't know if Dave would be part of that tour. It's a big deal, you know, with managers and companies and people to try to get all these celebrities to do something together. That, that's why that's so hard. Um, but uh, it's an interesting idea. Uh, let's go to Chris in Florida. Chris, you're on the air. Welcome. Hey, Alex. I was uh, I was at the the um, Orlando event, and uh, it was it was so good. It went over so well. Uh, the audience was so hyped, and the movie was great. I was so glad that you were, you, you showed your funny side um, at the beginning because the movie got kind of you know went, went pretty pretty deep and dark. But uh, still, I, I recommend that everybody watch it. It's just essential, essential uh, viewing. And um, it's kind of like an addendum to Endgame. Um, what I wanted to say to, um, to tie that in, I guess, to, with Ron Paul, um, 
is, uh, oh, I think also, Alex, you should change the E in your middle name to Eugenics Jones, because uh, if it wasn't for you <laughs> bringing that back out <laughs> into the, you know, the uh, lexicon, you know, eugenics is the whole heart and soul of the New World Order and how they operate, and they have just one thing left to implement their their socialist agenda, which is uh, health care, because you already have everything else. You have free food. You have. And by the therapy. way, all the founders of, of, of modern eugenics, Bertrand Russell, uh, George Bernard Shaw, all of them, they said under socialism, if we say you're not producing and we don't like you, we're going to kill you. People think socialists are trying to give poor people something. No, they want socialism to get you under control, to breed a giant underclass, to then use as an army against the middle class. And then in the next phase, they start killing the most of the people and we're now seeing that with the death panels uh, all of it uh, so you're absolutely right but as for uh you know the event uh, there in florida it was amazing and yes it is by admitting how bad things are that we can then have a solution to it uh, but uh, any other points you'd like to make yeah and what i was going to say was it doesn't yeah and at the same time it doesn't mean we can't have a sense of humor about it like you like you did at the beginning but what i wanted to say too was because this has been bugging me and this guy bugs me every week is um, is uh, Bill Maher, and um, what he said about Ron Paul, you know, he'll have Ron Paul on in one day, or he'll go on and he'll talk and he'll he'll bring up Ron Paul when he's on, like, uh, MSNBC, MSNBC or somewhere, and, you know, he'll talk real good about him, but then he'll say, oh, he's crazy because, uh, you know, he wants to um, go back to the gold standard. Uh, put us back on a gold standard, you know, and he'll, and he'll then turn around, you know, and kind of kind of uh, stab him in the back. The the other thing that he did, and, and I think all the celebrities that you know, and um, I actually have rubbed, rubbed shoulders with a few of them, like Brad Pitt should be ashamed of himself going on Bill Maher and saying that he's been to socialist countries and that the Tea Party people that were going to events and saying, oh, oh, we're going to go socialist. He goes, these people have never been to these countries. I have. And uh, it works great. Socialism works. It's okay. It's not as bad as you think. And no, it doesn't. It's, it creates hell holes. I tell you what, stay there. I want you to finish your your your, your, your celebrity point, and then we'll get to uh, the other callers, and then I'm getting to the news straight ahead. We're on the march. The empire's on the run. My friends, we stand at the crossroads. You ignore the information covered here daily at your own peril. You ignore the information. The blood, sweat, and tears we put out to bring you the reports, the videos, the guests, the information at Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, and PrisonPlanet.tv. We need to make hay while the sun shines. The globalists are coming down on us right now. This new world order is real. World government is real. Secret arrest of citizens. Torture. Poisoning of the food and water supply, it's all real. You are strong enough mentally out there, if you're a new listener, to at least research what I'm saying to you and find out that we haven't lied to you, we've told you the truth. I am begging you to go look at this information so you can see it from your own perspective and understand what we're facing so we can hopefully turn this around. Okay, I wanted to go back to uh, Chris in Florida to uh, finish finish his point, and I've got to race through some of the other callers here as I've got to get to the news. Uh, go ahead, uh, Chris, finish up your point. Okay, and also, uh, if you're a new listener, you know that the police state is drill because you get nervous every time there's a police officer, you know, pulling up behind you, and I see you on the road getting nervous and the change in the way that you drive and trying to switch lanes. But um, what I was talking about with celebrities and why I think that they should be ashamed of themselves is um, you know, like I said, Brad Pitt went on there and he talked about how he had been all over the world and that socialism worked in other, in other countries. Socialism has been a dismal failure everywhere that it's worked. And um, suspiciously, every war that America's fought for the socialist country, we've lost. And um, we have to ask ourselves that. And that's well, that's because the one. same banking interest want a collectivism. They want a socialist or fascist command and control to control the money pot and shut down their competition. Carol Quigley wrote a 900-plus page book for the State Department that the plates then got out, and he got real mad about it, but they only published a 1,000 of them. It was for internal publishing called Tragedy and Hope. 
and I've read his other book as well, and he admits the, 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 you know, the mega banks are monopoly men. They have, he believes that's good. They work with fascists, communists, socialists, anything that's command and control. And look, I'm not going to get into Brad Pitt, but I'll just leave it at this. I first learned that Brad Pitt knew about the New World Order because I knew from Aaron Russo off record that he'd, he'd talked to him, he'd given him his film, and that they thought it was very interesting that the Federal Reserve was private. Aaron Russo produced some big Hollywood movies with... Uh, you know, some pretty big stars uh, and, uh, of course, you know, brought Rolling Stone to the U.S. and other things. Uh, he was a patriot, started the Constitutional Party, uh, you know, got you know, involved with Ron Paul. Great guy, died of cancer in 2007, uh, made America freedom to fascism, which I really regret I wasn't in. He called me over and over again and could never get through for like a year through my uh, so-called office at the time. And so I wasn't in that film, but, um, it, you know, great documentary out there. People should get it from his website. But the point is, uh, is that... Then, I'm just going to leave it this, I learned later, I'm not going to get any more details, that Brad Pitt supposedly knows about the New World Order and his wife does. And people say, well, then why is she part of the CFR? Well, you could argue, well, to find out what's going on, she wants to become the establishment to deal you know, with it. And I'm not going to say any more about Brad Pitt. Um, the stuff I've been, you know, well, I'm just going to leave it at that. But, but yes, then these guys think it's like Ed Asner. You know, he's on uh, later in the week because he was going to be on for a full hour, can only do 30 minutes a few weeks ago. He's a really good guy. He means well. And he really believes in socialism. He knows vaccines are bad. He knows 9-11 is an inside job. Uh, you know, he stands up against these wars. And then he sees the big system attacking somebody like Chavez. Well, then Chavez must be good. See, it's the same thing with uh, Cindy Sheehan. Well, Chavez is being attacked. He must be good. No, just because Iran's being attacked, that doesn't make them good, their leadership. It's that the scientific crooks we've got are more organized and even more wicked than the wicked Iranian leadership. Okay? Because power corrupts absolute power corrupts absolutely. It's not it's not that, you know, uh, Syria's good and then Israel's bad. It's Israel has corrupt leadership, so does Syria. But the West isn't trying to fix Syria. They're invading with Al-Qaeda to literally push the Christians out. They've said they are because the globalists hate real Christians. I mean, it's just that, see, people either think like, well, America's good and you're for the wars or you don't like America. No, this isn't America doing this. These battleships, these aircraft carriers, these frigates, these jet aircraft don't belong to us. We pay for it. They tell us it's America, but it's not America. And the fact that they're going to use the NDAA and do all this to the American people and use the military against us, that's been the big wake-up call. Go ahead, sir. Oh, and my pet peeve, Alex, real big pet peeve is some of your guests use this word democracy and we are not a democracy we are a republic and um I, I suggest if you haven't heard it people type in alex jones real american hero and um i get goosebumps when i listen to it because uh you know you kind of get into that when you're um you know speaking in that courtroom and um you know you kind of go into what the difference between democracy and your republic is and, um, you know, they're left and the right way to extremes. And way in the what left... Is, what is Alex Jones' real American hero? Uh, oh, it's, it's an... Uh, Joe or something. Is that the name of a video or something? Yeah, if you type it into YouTube. And um, uh, it, it was uh, uh, an excerpt, I think, from uh, Police State uh, 2 or 3. And I think... It might have been later. It's when you're, when you're talking about... Um, the, uh, to the, the Attorney General, and you're saying why the Patriot Act, how they, they want to pay, pass Patriot Act 1, Patriot Act 2, Victory Act 1, Victory Act 2, and then you went into the definition. Oh, yeah, you're talking, about, you're talking about Matrix of Evil. Uh, when I was at the City Council and the Deputy Attorney General was there and I uh, gave that speech. Absolutely, that is a very powerful speech I gave. And you're saying they call that on YouTube, uh, Alex Jones, Real American Hero? Yeah, yeah, and it said, in case you forgot what a real American is, and that's what it says, I think, as the, as the description. It says, well, here it is. So everybody should watch that. No, I that is that. a good speech. In fact, that's the speech that uh, really woke up when, when he was given the Matrix of Evil, Emilio Estevez. And then he gave it to his dad, Martin Sheen, who really liked it. And then that's how Charlie Sheen became a listener, was Matrix of Evil. And then they like ordered all my videos and, and locked themselves up in, in, at their house. I think it was at Emilio's house and like watched all 10 of my films at the time. This was like eight years ago. You know, watched all of them right there in one sitting. I guess nine years ago.